And now, please welcome the Vice President and General Manager of Intel's Cloud Platforms Group, Jason Waxman. Good afternoon. I gotta tell you, it is hard to believe that this is the fifth Open Compute Summit. I'm starting to think that Frank has his own law that the audience, every Compute Summit's gonna increase by 50% year on year. So there's a definite density here. Anyway, uh, very good to be here again. What I wanted to do is spend a little bit of time talking about the imperative of this year. I think that 2014 is gonna be a very critical year for the project. Obviously, the momentum in the industry is continuing, but at the end of the day, it comes down to three critical things. The first is contributions. We need to continue to feed the stream of innovation and ideas that are gonna make data centers more efficient, that are gonna allow them to deliver more performance to keep up with the demands that all of you have as data center users. The second thing is development, right? At the end of the day, you can take these contributions, you can take the good ideas, but if people aren't developing products to it, then something's wrong. The other thing that I think is absolutely essential is that we need to make sure that we have a healthy development ecosystem, a place where if vendors invest in products, that they can go ahead and feel like they get a good return for the products that they're investing in. That makes for a healthy open compute ecosystem. And then the third thing is about adoption. We need to make sure that there are more products that are available to meet different uses. There's nothing that's more disappointing than seeing a user that's interested in adopting open compute and for some reason they can't find the customization that they need. That is really what open compute has been for me, is allowing customers more hands-on to be able to deliver the technology to meet their specific requirements. What I wanna do is cover each of these in a little bit of detail, just to let you know what we've been trying to bring to the party and what you can expect from us this year and at the show. So let me start with contributions. There have been over 12 contributions that Intel has made to the Open Compute Project since its instantiation. The first I wanna talk about here is servers. Now obviously we're on our third generation of contributions to Open Compute. The two projects that you'll see here at the show today and, and we ask that you kind of delve into some more detail on, the first one is what we call Panther. It's based on our Atom C2000 uh, product. That's the eight core low power SOC. The one down below is actually a first unveiled here in the industry. It is the dual socket Haswell generation. It's our next generation of Xeon product and board. And you'll see the first systems that we've demoed running anywhere here at Open Compute. The second element, obviously, is rack technology, being able to bring things together. There's been a lot of contribution made to the design and the specifications in the past. We are making not only contributions to the next generation of rack design, but we're working to make sure that the compliance and interoperability works. I'll talk about a little more our rack development and our rack scale architecture in the, in the next slide. We've been working on storage, and if you go to our booth, you'll see a wide range of designs from WeWin, Dell, Quanta, that support both hot and cold storage designs. And then from a networking perspective, we made a contribution, as Frank highlighted earlier, to a top of rack switch, 48 ports, 10 gigabit ethernet. And we'd like to see that ecosystem continue to take off. What's not shown here are some of the other contributions that we've made, such as the receptacle for silicon photonics. But again, please do attend our tech sessions later on today and our booth, and you can see more details about that if you're interested in design or adoption. And then, of course, bringing all this together, Intel has a lot of history in compliance and interoperability. It's important to make sure that the products meet the specifications as they're specified and that you can go ahead and, and mix and match to the extent needed and possible. I want to highlight the community development. And basically, we started last year talking about the vision for the rack scale architecture. Since then, we've brought that vision globally. We've worked with some of the companies from China, Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu on the Scorpio project um, to make sure that there is some convergence in the specification designs toward open rack. We then highlighted in September that we were working with Microsoft on some of their rack designs. So there's a lot of momentum, even more than we anticipated in the industry for this. Today, if you go to our booth, you'll see the first fully functional rack scale architecture. This includes the boards, both Atom and Xeon, storage, compute, top of rack switch, and of course, silicon photonics, all fully functional. 
And then the last piece of it is making sure that we're broadening adoption. Uh, we've been working with Riot Games, who's currently deploying OCP version 2.0 using Intel windmill-based boards. Uh, we've worked previously with uh, Rackspace when they announced that they'd be moving their cloud architecture to open compute, and we'll continue to facilitate that. If you attend our tech session later on today, we're really pleased to have Goldman talking with us about how they're planning to deploy the Decathlete boards. And of course, what we see on the OEM side of things is a broadening in the community, and we're very pleased to be working with that community to make sure that the designs meet the specifications and working on compliance and interoperability. So with that, I want to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you in the tech sessions later on this afternoon, and please do stop by our booth.